The May issue of Down East Magazine is out and on the cover, 101 Reasons to Love Maine in Summer. I think that's a sentiment we can all get behind. With us here on 207, Editor-in-Chief of Down East, Brian Kevin, to talk about that and more. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Let's start with not the 101 list, but an interesting feature on two brothers who are woodworkers. Nothing too unusual about that, but what these guys make is indeed out of the ordinary. They're cousins, as it happens, cousins, but very okay. close cousins, besties, they're described in the story. And uh, yeah, a couple of younger guys in Benton, so they're outside of Waterville around Unity, and they uh, have gotten into uh, mycology in recent years. They found themselves out in the woods learning to forage for chanterelles and for different sorts of mushrooms, and then growing mushrooms of their own. They have been into woodworking for a long time, making sort of very, you know, artisan spoons and things they would take to common ground and they've begun producing these very artistic sort of mushroom sculptures based on their fondness for it. It's neat looking stuff. Yeah, they're beautiful. Let's get to that 101 reasons to love summer in main list. There are only a couple things that we have time to hit on. Not all 101. No. That would be a lot. <laughs> we'll start with an event that's going on at the Desert of Maine. Yeah, so there's an outfit called the Ziggurat Theater Ensemble. They do site-specific theater, and it has kind of a fantastical element to it. They write their own shows. They're very big on puppetry and costumes. And the show that they're pre premiering this year, which is called The Sand Princess, takes place in the Desert of Maine, which you maybe know has had sort of a rebirth in recent years. Um, you can see this theater on the dunes. I'm actually going to be there camping with my family in June, so that was one we were excited to shout out. Are you also going to another one of the events on the uh -huh. 101 list, the <laughs> lawnmower races in Searsmont. Yeah, so the lawnmower, uh, <laughs> Thunder Valley lawnmower racing outfit is a staple of Knox County where I live. And uh, they get together and they race, souped up and, and also non-souped up lawnmowers, short tracks. It can be fun. They do wheelies. It's a blast. They do it at the Union uh, County Fair, which we go to every year. But they also do it at Thresher's Brewery in Searsmont, which is kind of one of the closer breweries to where I live in Hope. It's a great time. Everybody stands around, has a couple of drinks, watches these lawnmowers <laughs> tear across a track, and uh, just one of 101 reasons. That's a reason to love <laughs> summer in Maine. Let's move on to another article. It's one that you wrote yourself. It's about alewives in Maine, which after coming to the brink of extinction yeah. are now coming back and interestingly enough, really attracting a big following of people. Yeah, and this has been an ongoing story, the restoration of this sort of uh, forage fish to Maine waters. Last year, there was a couple of big sort of strides in the direction of restoration on the Blue Hill Peninsula. The alewife run was restored to all five ponds, I think it is, in the Bagadoos River watershed for the first time. Um, at China Lake, there were some dams removed and fish passage created. Um, and yeah, so in Vassalboro, they're seeing alewife runs. And what's sort of happening, what was interesting to talk to a couple of folks in the nonprofit conservation world was that as these runs have come back, you know, people who don't necessarily have any investment in, in the fish, aren't lobstermen, for example, using them for bait, are coming to appreciate these little alewives as wildlife and lining up at these fish passage spots that are popping up to just sort of watch the spectacle of these runs. Thousands and thousands of fish, you know, uh, going through places like the uh, Mill Creek Preserve in Westbrook. And um, it's just, uh, it's, it's amazing to watch. Uh, the Maine Rivers nonprofit uh, outfit, I should mention, puts together a map that's the, the Alewife Trail watershed map. So if you want to know where to watch it, you can go to their website and you can find some of these spots. Great tip. Yeah. Let's end with one more article. Maine, of course, has a rich history of art. Much of the reason for that is the artist colonies right. that have been here over the decades. You decided to look into whether art colonies are really still vibrant in this state. We got to talking about doing a story about art colonies, thinking about Monhegan, thinking about Ogunquit, places that have this historical tradition of folks from away coming to study or to you know set up an easel and paint on the cliffs or on the shore. And the more we talked about it, the more we realized that it's kind of a nebulous term. Didn't necessarily know what we meant when we were talking about art colonies in a contemporary context. And what we came to realize, and I didn't know, I think people in the arts world probably do, is that Maine today has more uh, summer artist residency programs than just about any place in the country. So we talked a little bit to folks in curatorial spheres, folks from some of these residency programs in Skowhegan, which is the famous Skowhegan School of Art and Sculpture, um, you know, folks from the Hewn Oaks Colony, which is sort of newish out in Western Maine around Lovell, um, the Ellis Beauregard Foundation, which is in the middle of building a huge new facility in Rockland, and got a sense of how we got from the days of Ogunquit and the easels on the shore to a little more formalized system that still brings so many artists to Maine every year to practice. It's all in the May issue of Down East. Summer's coming. Can't wait. Thanks. Brian Kevin, thank you as <laughs> always. And stick around. We're going to return to 207 right after this.